what is up my people welcome to another video uh, here in my youtube channel i am carlos angiano i am also the pipeline guy so let's get started with some cool python pipeline dcc stuff so in this particular video um i want to just show you a very like simple technique that i use to develop in the eclipse ide and test my code in max if this is your first time watching one of these videos please check out the other video that i made that is going to be link or thumbnail or something somewhere around here uh, which is a video about um, how to set up Eclipse to do this kind of work and how to use Eclipse to develop in Python so one little note about the conversation of developing in a standalone IDE and testing in a DCC application in Studio Studio, Studio Max is that the way we kind of approach this traditionally has been by um, having our IDE uh, send code to Max for Max to evaluate and so like that's always a big question that people ask is like how do I run my Max code directly from my IDE and I think that that works with um, very simple languages like MaxScript that don't have like very powerful debuggers and stuff like that because the task is very simple you want to sort of just like type things in your IDE press a button and you know people would write plugins that would like listen in a port they would the IDE would send uh, code via port connection to the DCC app and then the DCC app would basically execute that code and then you would see whatever you coded happen on screen. However, I think that for Python and for using a robust IDE such as Eclipse, that's not necessarily the best workflow. In my opinion, the best way to do this is actually to write a little bit of code in Max that just brings your code into Max um, and then actually send that code back out to the IDE so that the IDE can use its debugging tools to actually help you fix problem, um, learn how particular libraries are put together, and just make you an overall more efficient developer. So before I show you too much about the debugging process, let's actually set up like a sample script and figure out how we could potentially write some code that loads this code and then allows us to connect it to Max. Okay, so here I have my trusty Eclipse window and we're also going to run 3D Studio Max 2020 and we're gonna write some very simple code. Um, I've already created a project on my standalone uh, interpreter. Uh, so in here, I'm just going to create like a very simple test. Start, start my test tool. This is a definition that I'm gonna write. And at first this is going to do like a very simple like, hello pipeline guy and that's really it's going to do and I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna write a little bit of code here so that I can actually execute this in my IDE but um, not have the code execute whenever I import it so this allows me to basically set up like a very simple test scenario here where since I'm not actually using any DCC components yet or any third-party libraries or anything like that I can actually test my code and make sure that it works on the standalone so let's say that this is just like the most basic application that I want to start testing in Max. Um, as I mentioned, instead of sending the code directly into Max, I actually just want to write a little bit of code that will bring this function into Max. And it'll just be like a very small amount of code. It will allow me to basically run the code, reload it, and just make sure that it's working. And that is actually going to be what I use um, as my connection between Eclipse and Max. And the reason why I do this is because that same code that I'm going to write right now, I will use on the debugger and as I said this might look a little bit odd to you but understand that the most important thing really is not to send the code into Max is to actually be able to use Eclipse's remote debugging so anyways my basic tool here it's done it's just something really simple it's just a, a function that I'm gonna expose to Max so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna open up a editor so the first thing that I want to do is that uh, if I show you where this code currently is uh, here this is the file that we're going to be importing in um, you'll see that this is uh, in a project folder on my C drive it's nowhere inside of Max Max right now has no idea this module exists so I'm not gonna be able to just import it right so in my test code one of the things that I'm going to do is that I'm going to add this path to the Python environment so that I can actually run an import reload the import um, so that my code gets updated and then actually execute my code to see the changes in my code as I execute um, just things in Max so that's very easy in order to do that actually I close this a little too early in order to do that I'm going to copy this path and I'm gonna call it uh, path just going to make a little Python variable there this is not coding because I haven't changed my language style to Python here we go now 
Max knows that I'm running a little bit of Python code. Then I'm going to import the, sys, uh, the system module or sys module. And this sys module has a variable called path. And since this is max code, like just strict max code that I'm using just to test these things, I'm not too, I don't really care too much about making it Python 3 compliant because right now this is just basically throwaway code for me. But um, as you'll see when we print this syspath, we see all the different paths that Python knows about. So every time I run an import, it's actually going to look in these different paths to see if the, the thing that I'm trying to import exists in one of these paths. And it's actually going to import that code from the very first place where it finds it started from like starting from the first element in the list to the last one. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to just write a quick test to see if this particular path that I'm going to be importing from already exists in the system path. So we're going to say if, if path not in syspath, right? So basically if it's not in the system path, then let's insert it, let's add it. And one of the things that I'm going to do, the reason I'm using insert and not append is because I'm going to add it to the beginning of the system path so that it's the very first thing there. So when I run my import, it's not actually going to go through all of these paths. It's actually going to run it, it's going to find it on the very first path, right? So we're kind of prioritizing this, this path. So now we're going to print this path again, and we should actually be able to see... Oh, oh, and I actually messed up a little bit here. I added this path again. Actually, I did this wrong. All right, so now I fixed my code, and now when I run this again, I should actually see that the first path is that actual folder that's holding my test code. The next thing I need to do is that now that I have this code, I can actually import my test, uh, my test module now. So I can actually say something like import max to Python and then I should be able to basically just print this so let's see what this does very good evaluate very cool you can see that it actually brings in my max to Python module which means that I can also run the code that I just put together in Eclipse very easily all right very good so you can see that I am now able to run that method very easily where I just have a little bit of test code that makes sure that Max can see where I'm working from and then I can just import that code and just basically run anything that's in there from this namespace that is created. So there's one limitation though. So like what if instead of saying hello pipeline guy, I wanted to also add my name, Carlos, right? So obviously if I execute this as a standalone, right? This is a brand new Python session, so that value is going to update, everything is going to work fine. But if I execute it from here, you'll notice that like the actual message is not getting updated, right? The reason why this happens is because working on Python standalone tools is very different than working on a DCC application. Whenever you're writing a Python standalone tool, whenever you close this, the tool, the entire Python session ends. And then when you start the tool again, there's a brand new session that starts, right? And so when we're importing these things, or importing libraries, um, what a lot of people don't know is that Python is actually compiling this to a binary file. And in order to speed things up, it doesn't want to have to compile files that it's already basically compiled once. So because of that, it does a caching. So it caches everything for the session. Once you import something, if you never imported it before, it compiles it once. If any other thing in the middle of that session requests this again, it doesn't recompile it. It just pulls the one that's already cached there on disk or on memory. That creates some complications where working in DCC apps because when the DCC app starts up, a Python session starts, and then that Python session doesn't end until you close the DCC, which means that once you've imported something, it's not going to recompile that thing until you restart Max. But there's no need to fear because we can actually, in Python, tell Python to force recompile one of these libraries. And the only thing that's going to change in this particular example is that as I import Max to Python, I'm actually going to put it in a temporary namespace, so like and to maybe like max to pi something like that so we're saying import as max to pi and then we're going to use the reload command and this will actually force recompile it and when we execute the same uh, function from our um from our newly created namespace that's now getting reloaded every time we execute we should actually get the latest code so let's take a look at what that looks like 
Here we go. So now we actually get hello Python guy and we actually get the updated value Carlos. So the thing that's really cool about this is that now I can start writing in Eclipse a more fancy tool, right? So now I can actually start doing cool stuff. So I can start saying uh, import by MXS. I can create maybe a global variable and say by MXS runtime. So like now I can actually use some of the max group commands in my tool i can also maybe we're gonna create a message box so we're gonna use some PySide components this is very simple stuff so we're gonna say from PySide to import qt qt widgets and one thing that's important to note is that in this particular standalone uh, version of python that i have my id hooked up in i haven't installed PySide 2. So if I don't do a pip install of PySide 2, this code will fail on standalone. But when I execute it through Max, Max does have PySide 2 already built in. So the code will work in Max. Now I can get it working on both, but I would have to take the step to actually do a pip installation of PySide 2 onto my standalone project. I don't want to do that at this moment, but hey, if you guys want to see me do that kind of stuff, or you want to learn about how to like create standalone PySide applications, leave me a comment, say something in the video. Just let me know. <coughs> All right, so we're going to create a little um, standalone window. So here, actually, I messed this up. Uh, Eclipse tried to add some stuff there. But one thing to point out is that as I'm writing these things, I'm getting all of the cool auto formatting, um, auto formatting that Eclipse does uh, because I am working in Eclipse, and I'm also uh, getting all the pylint messages. For example, this is telling me that something expects two lines, whatever. So. You know, here we go. The auto formatter fixes that, and then you know it tells me that I'm missing a doc string, so I can you know use the shortcuts in Eclipse to actually add a doc string. This is a test tool, and then um, so that kind of stuff, right? So I'm using the features of my IDE, just the basic ones, um, which I wouldn't have in just the standard like built-in Max Max script editor, right? So we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna create a sphere, okay? And then after creating a sphere, we're gonna throw a message box, QT message box, sphere name. There we go. Very good, very good, very good. All right, awesome. So we're gonna save that real quick and we're gonna execute it here and see what happens. Very cool. So we just execute it and I get my message mark, my message box, made sphere, sphere, sphere one. And if I look in here, sure enough, there's my sphere, right? Really, what I like about this is that once I have my test code set up, I can use this exact same test code to do remote debugging. So to actually do remote debugging, we are gonna have to download an application that I've made, but it's the Studio Max Pi Dev Debug. Um, and so you can basically find this in my GitHub page. Uh, the username is Mango Pipeline, and the project is Studio Max Pi Dev Debug. So you can download this from here. Like the easiest way is to just download the zip file that will uh, allow you to basically decompress this guy and put it wherever you see fit so in this case we're gonna keep things really simple I am going to just dump this guy in my desktop so here I'm getting where are all my windows here we go so this is just my desktop I am just going to basically unpack uh, the debugging tool to my desktop once I've done that, I am going to open the debug tool in Max Script. Obviously, you can get fancier and actually put it in a button or in a menu or something. This is just more about getting you guys some code that you can use to get started on this. Uh, and I'm going to open the remote debugger Max Script, right? And then I'm going to execute this little tool. And this is going to open a window that I can use to actually debug some code. So let's see what that looks like on the Eclipse side. The the most important thing that you need to know when using the remote debugger is that your very first step before you debug any code is that you actually need to start a uh, PyDev server through the Eclipse IDE. So the way in which you do that is if you don't have a little debugging perspective button here, you can hit the plus and add it. So at that, now we have our perspective view. And when we switch to the perspective view, you get a few new buttons. And one of the buttons that you get is this one right here. It's a little bug with a P. And that basically starts the PyDev server. So we're gonna click this, and now we can see that our PyDev server is running. Everything's groovy, everything's great. Um, the next thing that we want to do is that we want to actually set a breakpoint. We want to say, hey, we're gonna debug this code, but I want 
the Eclipse IDE to freeze on a particular line and let me inspect things. Let me look around. Let me see what variables exist, what variables, uh, what values are attached to those variables, that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna tell my debugger to actually stop on line 13. Once I've done this, I'm basically ready to debug. I'm going to grab the small amount of test code that I wrote here, and I'm just going to copy it over to my debug tool. And that's it. Now the next thing that we do is we say, I want to debug this code. And so the first thing that's gonna happen is that Max is actually gonna freeze for a second, and then Eclipse is going to find the debugging tool, and it's going to get the code from Max, and it's gonna stop. And it's gonna stop on this um, a Python script that basically runs all of the Python stuff. And it always stops here because this is like a good place for you to like if you forgot to actually make any breakpoints in the code you're actually trying to troubleshoot, this kind of gives you like a little bit of a pause for you to like actually go ahead and add those breakpoints. But we already have a breakpoint already set up in our code. So we're gonna go ahead and hit F7. Just hit it once and that actually jumps us to our first breakpoint in our code. The thing that's interesting about this is that Max will actually be kind of frozen. You can tell that it's actually not responding and that's because it's waiting from input from Eclipse. Like Max is literally waiting till I let the next line execute to actually be able to execute. So there's some really cool things that you can do here. So for example, one of the things that I can do is that, as I mentioned before, I can see all the variables that I've declared so far um, up to line 13 and what is currently inside of them. So for example, one of the variables that I set up, a global private variable was MXS and this holds a link to our max script runtime. And that's something that Eclipse usually wouldn't have access to, right? But I can actually click in here and the debugger can actually like inspect that variable and figure out like all the stuff that exists inside of that runtime. So this is something that's super cool. So as you can tell, we can see that there's like a bunch of stuff in, inside here, namespaces, variables, all type of stuff that we basically use in MaxScript and now in Python to be able to write cool tools that do cool stuff in Max. So let's go ahead and press F6 and that will move us onto the next line. And you'll notice that a new variable now shows up. And here we go, we're gonna select Sphere and we can see what Sphere is. Sphere is a Ma MXS wrapper base, Sphere, Sphere 03. And then when we open this up, we can actually see some of the properties such as the radius, right? So this is like super powerful because if you're writing like, you know, some super complicated um, Python script that like manages the number of segments that you have in the sphere and for sort of whatever reason you're not getting the correct radius or the correct segments, you can now walk through your code line by line and see like how many segments did the, did the sphere start with, how many did it end with, like what, how are the variables changing line by line. And so like this makes it very easy to find problems with your code and fix them and not only does it allow you to find problems easier but honestly debugging also sometimes teaches you how like large libraries are connected together and it allows you to like follow the trace of like how many methods how many files are involved in this one thing right because you run the process you set up breakpoint and then you just follow it line by line so that's something that is really really cool that you can do uh, in uh, Eclipse with Max and with this very simple uh, debugging tool for Max that I've put together. So that's it guys, this is how I run my code in Eclipse and connect to Max and this is the process that I use to actually be able to debug my code with like a proper remote debugger. So let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of this workflow? Is debugging something that you don't use but you would like to learn more about? Is there particular maybe code examples that you would like to see me debug? Um, let me know in the comments and of course as always please subscribe to the channel, give me a like like, say something nice in the comments or something nasty. I don't care. You guys know it's YouTube. You've been doing it for a while. You know how this works. Anyways, thank you guys for uh, watching this video and hopefully I'll see you guys on the next one.